thereabouts. Okay, well, welcome everybody. I hope you're all surviving the holiday season and uh, not going too crazy. Um, we have a relatively short agenda, so we've had a call to order and we, now we have to do the roll call. Does that mean everybody has to say their name? No, we can see you all, you're on the recording. Very good, um, moving right along. Approval of the minutes of November 9th. Will somebody please move to approve the minutes or are there any corrections or additions? I move to approve the meeting minutes. Thank you, second? Second it. Sabrina seconds, thank you very much. The meet, all in favor? Aye. Okay, moving right along to the next thing. Um, <clears throat> all business, Esme, this is you. Do you have anything to tell us about the affordable housing people? Um, they've been in the newspapers, they exist. They it's do. Always... Um, I do not have anything right now. I haven't um, heard back, but there's my email's been being a little bit weird lately. So it is possible that they have replied and that it has gotten like it's been deleting some things. But I'm just I'll just email them again and hopefully that one will go out so yeah please do just you know like do it once a month before the meeting so that if anything big changes we know about it and then we can talk about it um, Esme if if you find you can't go or something let me know I can I can be an alternate for you thanks Barbara Okay, anything else about affordable housing at the moment? Nothing, all right, moving along to new business. Okay, now we have a, a member who has not attended in more than three um, meetings. And so we un, the first item under member resignation is that for one of our members who's missed more than three consecutive meetings and we have not been able to make contact with her. So if we, have three meetings missed without justifiable reason, the member is considered resigned. What we need is a motion that says, I, we move or I move that the Human Rights Commission has determined that Virginia Lorenz has been absent for three consecutive meetings without justifiable reason and is considered to be resigned. Uh, is there anyone who would be willing to move that? Jane, it sounds like you just made the motion. Am I allowed to make motions? No, you can't. I'll, I'll I'll move the um in that case I'll I'll do it. Okay, Barbara Vaughn moves that motion. Can we have a second on that motion, please? Second. Amy seconds. Uh all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um and Monica, will you tell everybody what you are now going to do under the rules? Yes. So um, when this happens, we first, we email them to let them know that they have been resigned. We also mail them a letter, uh, which the town clerk does sign. And then we will update our records. So as of, call it tomorrow, uh, we will have an open position and people can start applying. Okay, now do we have anybody who's in the pipeline and has applied and we didn't have room for them? Do you know? Do you know? You know, actually, I think we do. I think there is one person, I don't know who they are, but I will email my boss today and make sure that we have that information. Okay, because if we have somebody who's interested, then we should proceed. And if we don't, then we have to go out and beat the bushes. Um, I'd still like to beat the bushes and get a couple of men on this group, but that may not be in the pipeline right now. So anyway. And there's okay. nothing wrong with a bunch of women. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with a bunch of women, but the more diverse perspectives you have, the better off you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. No, uh, well, what's your name? Um, I'm losing my mind, just so you all know this. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said that she would be happy when the Supreme Court was all women. Mm -hmm. um, and Me too. Was nothing wrong with that because nobody seemed to mind when it was all men. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not opposed to that. But I'm also in favor of multiple perspectives. So let's just see where we go with that. Thank you, Monica. Just let us know. Okay. Now, there is an overlap between future projects and the proclamation that I sent you, which 
um, is part of my member report. And did everybody look at their email and see that proclamation that the town council passed on Monday night? I am very delighted with this um, because what it does is it lays out all the whereases are summary of the international statement of human rights from the United Nations. This is what the big human rights are. The, there's a million other ones, but these are the big ones. And that being the case, it is our responsibility to do one through six and, um, or actually two through six, the town council did one. And we are responsible to educate people about their human rights, explore assertions of violations of human rights. Oh, we've got the education one in there twice. We should have taken that out. Anyway, our big job is to educate people. So that kind of goes right into the idea of future projects. We have, I, uh, what Margaret suggested, and I agree with, is that I need to write a report to the town council of what we've done so far this year and then what we anticipate doing for the rest of the year and maybe even a slightly longer term agenda. And what I've got on my list of what we've done is we did the Debbie uh, Irving program. We did a two part discussion of her book and then one visit from her. We also attended the Mansfield, welcome to Mansfield thing in September. We did not attend the winter carnival or whatever the, the winter welcome thing. Um, and I need to know what else each of you has done so that I can put it in the report. Um, and I don't know whether, like I said, this goes over the lines because the proclamation says what we're supposed to do. And I think we ought to concentrate on education right now. And that leads us right into future projects and member reports. The lines are fuzzy. So what else has everybody been doing this year? Um, we've set up a liaison with the um, Affordable Housing Committee. What else have we done besides what I mentioned? There was the Pride Month proclamation and the Juneteenth proclamation. Oh, I'm, I'm still in, you know, my year starts in September, so that was wrong. We need more than that. Okay. Pride Month proclamation and the Juneteenth proclamation. There was something else we did before that, and I can't remember. There was another proclamation of some sort. The uh, Witness Stones. Were we officially involved in the Witness Stones, or were we just uh, commending everybody for doing it? I don't think we had anything much to do with that as a group. So. Was the MLK mural was last year, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Have we done anything else that anybody can think of? Well, Jane, I think that we should not ignore number four, which is our exploring assertions of violations of human rights. And along with that, we did put up those suggest those boxes. Oh, right? we created suggestion boxes. Okay. Uh, not suggestion boxes so much as um, boxes that give, I don't know what you would call them, that would give people a, a way to make an anonymous we complaint. In communication with the public by providing places for them to give us their opinion. Yes, and those have all been set up and has anybody checked okay. to see if there was anything in them? Who's, who's supposed to do that? You. Me? This is your baby. So All say. right, so I didn't realize that. So I should be driving I around. It. Um, they're at the library, the town hall, and each of the schools. Community yeah. How many do we have? Um, I think Margaret sent them out and I don't yes, know exactly how many. So that's my job to go around and collect the things from those. Well, you know, I don't mind doing it. I'll do it. I just need to know. Well, since you started this project, it seems like that would be a good thing for you to do. But sure. it also would be appropriate for us to ask somebody who works for the town and goes, you know, like maybe the administrator of each building where they're located to check them once a month and then tell you if there's anything in there. Is that a possibility? Can we do Why that? How sure. All we have to do is ask. I'm sure. Um, they'll find somebody who can do that. Are if, they at the school? I, I if, don't know. Okay, because I don't, if if it's at EO, I have no idea where that would be. So maybe Barbara, what you could do is find out from Margaret where she put them. Yeah. 
find out okay. who's running those buildings and then make a couple of phone calls and see what you find out. Yeah, I'll do that. Before you start running around all over town, that would exactly. be good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we've got a liaison with the Affordable Housing Commission. We did the Pride Proclamation, the Juneteenth Proclamation, and we created an opportunity for the public to submit their concerns through boxes that are distributed in public buildings. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that we can do is just go back and check through the old minutes and make yeah. sure that we're not missing anything. Right. Um, when you are all set, let me know, too. I'll see if I can get you on the first uh, agenda of the new year, but it might not be last year. I know, I don't think we went till February. I think it took that long for us okay. to get on the agenda. That's fine. Just as long as we do it sometime before it's all the snow melts. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Because my memory is horrendous. I'm really sorry. I forgot to take that second education sentence out, but I did forget. Um, Okay, so that's kind of our mandate in outline form. And what I'd like to do is to spend just a little time asking you, what do you think, what projects come to mind that we can start doing now that are minimally expensive and um, involve people in conversations about human rights? Go ahead, Amy. So if I may, um... The Deliberation Discourse kids have been working super hard on a couple of things. We just ended um, a period poverty drive, which was very successful. We'll be making a donation of almost $450. And I can't even tell you how many menstrual products we <laughs> we have an entire class of just stuff full. But anyway, so we've got that. But we've been doing, um, we've got two public forums coming up that I think that if we had the um, the commission behind us would help a lot. One is gonna be on access to education. Um, it will be a public forum. It will be held at the high school. I don't have the date. It's coming, I don't remember right now. Um, and maybe Esmeer from Felicia know that it, off the top it, of the head. Yeah, it's supposed to be in February. Sometime. And then we have another one that's going to be on food insecurity. Okay, what did you say access education was the access first? to education, access to education, correct. And for so them. we're working hard to figure out what that particular form is going to look like, because as we are all well aware, there are so many, in fact, I was writing notes as we were chatting, um, things that can hinder access, right? The housing is certainly one of them that we're, you know, that's on our radar. Food insecurity can cause trouble with people being able to get to school, bullying for any reasons. Um, so we're looking into what that evening is gonna look like, but our 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 goal is to bring in um, as many people as possible. We've had up to, we've had 90, I think we had 90 at one of our public forums pre-COVID that was really successful. Yeah, I um, so if we can, if you all, we, were, we really want your assistance in that evening and shaping that evening. Um, the kids will facilitate the conversations and then naturally we're looking for actions to come out of it. So rather than being an evening where particularly with EO, we're looking at like, what are all the things that we haven't done? We'd like it to be looking at what have we done and what still needs to be done, that kind of thing. Um, and that could be with all of the schools, but we do want to have a, a focus on local education. And then same with the food insecurity one. Um, Esme, Felicia, do you know when the food insecurity one's going to be? Is that March? That one's supposed to be later in May. Okay. So um, the, we're going to really, the, the, right after the holidays pass, we're going to be putting you know, all of our energy into making those evenings really successful. Um, I know that it's on somebody's to-do list to reach out to all of you too for ideas about what you might want to see for that evening. Janine, I know you've got your foot in education as well, very much in terms of working in the schools. Sabrina, I know that you too are um, you know, passionate about education. You've got a child with special needs. Um, Quincy, you're certainly a new mom and I know that education has been something that's been important to you anyway from your conversations here with us. And Jane, you've been involved in education your entire life. So to make that evening really come alive um, and be meaningful so that we have those conversations, we have some of the tough conversations, but we also come out with some action steps. And that way too, if the commission is on board and is able to support the students with this, 
then we have a public forum, right? Where everybody knows and we can all work collectively to make sure that the actions are put into, you know, are, are come to fruition in whatever way we can have that happen. Um, and so keep, start keeping, you know, think about this. Um, if you hear, see, or talk to other people in town, please have them send in, you know, in their interests or ideas our way. Um, there'll be small breakout rooms, and then we will have a panel of experts that will address the audience afterward. Um, so we're going to be running it um, like a mishmash between um, a true deliberation and an encounter, which should be really exciting. What do you imagine, other than giving you ideas, how can we help you shape this and publicize this? Yeah, so um, once, I know that Margaret's been wonderful about posting things as we've got our calendars done, so I know that she, I can count on her, but just to drum up so that, you know, like, um, I'm sure there are people out there who think, well, I don't need to worry about this any longer, right? Because my children aren't in school. We don't, we know we have that population always in all towns. Um, people who maybe have younger children who you meet in passing, who, who have kids coming up through the system. Um, we'll be reaching out to the NAACP. I know that Quincy has good contacts there, but I know that all of you have had interactions with people from the NAACP. I just let my membership lapse. I've got to get re renew my membership, but um, <laughs> anything we can do to draw people in, and then really um, suggestions about what kinds of things you'd like to see us touch on to the best of our ability, right? It's such a broad topic and we're trying to grapple with what is that gonna look like exactly? Uh, we've got a couple of different ideas out there um, and I think we've got a lot of feasible ideas, but I think really Jane and everybody else, if you think, you know, yes, we need to look at address special ed and look at, you know, we need to address mental health. I know that that's something that um, Derek is really, um, it really feels is very important in terms of how do we deal with mental health and the neurodivergent children who maybe sometimes feel left out. Um, you know, CAB, CAB, the Cultural Awareness Brigade is doing some wonderful things, but how might we make it more, more like the speakers? Like, can we make it a bigger deal at CAB? So, you know, those are those kinds of things too. But so um, I think Jane, you're right now, we're, we're really just getting our, our energy going, but we're excited. And we know that this is an opportunity, as you've been saying, to bring those people in. And it's our first time after, you know, after a long time with COVID, it's gonna be the first time for all of these students to have a live audience. And I think we can make it a really, two real powerful nights. We know that food insecurity is an issue for our Yukon kids and people in our town. Mm -hmm. And we certainly know that access to education, we've made, we're making strides. We've got new superintendents who are making, you know, good, good progress, but we know that there's still more that can be done. So, and it's, and as opposed to trying to be really adversarial, like how can we all work together to see this being done, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, I think the work together part is critical. And I think we're making steps in that direction and we will continue to do that. I'll tell you later, I'm gonna go meet with the director of the um, Human Rights Institute at UConn sometime soon so that we can pick up a connection with that. It just dawned on me that Peter, uh, Peter, excuse me, Glenn was the director and we didn't, he didn't need to make the connection, but I am not and I do. And so that's on my agenda to do. Okay, so we are gonna collaborate with and support the, uh, dis discourse and dialogue project as much as we can and try to draw people in and give them ideas as we think of them. Um, what other projects, if any, do you have? We have to do something or talk about what we wanna do about Juneteenth and it is not too soon. Um, Cause last year we kind of got caught in the backwash and never did much. And the, Cha the challenge of Juneteenth is that it's the end of the school year and it overlaps with various other things. But we would like to um, have some commemoration of Juneteenth or find out who else is commemorating Juneteenth and work with them so that we're represented there. So um, thoughts about that. Hi, Velda, nice to see you. Hi, how are you? Sorry, I'm late. Just getting out of my um, this is staff meeting, all the gathering, and my daughter is not trying to leave, so I had to run in the car. I'm so sorry. How's everybody doing? <laughs> we're doing okay. We're trying. We're planning things that we might do now. I'm in a conflict because I think of the the rest of the year is from now to June, and is that incorrect? Or should I be thinking next up to next December? I. Hmm. 
I guess in the academic year, it's from now to May, right? So I, I guess, are we going um, academic year? Are we going um, calendar year? Margaret, what do you think about that? When is our calendar? Is it, is it January to December or September to June? It's January to December. So we're not just thinking about what are we going to do this spring? We're thinking about all the way through. Okay. What am I? What? Go ahead. Margaret, did you have something else to say? No, I thought it was Velda who was. Um, no, I just I don't think it's too soon to, to think about Juneteenth, Indigenous Peoples Day, what we want to do with Celebrate Mansfield. Um, and then this International Human Rights Day next December 10th is uh, the 75th anniversary. So there is a nice, um, you know, th there's a, a lot of opportunities in the it, through the year. And Margaret, if I may, to piggyback on what Margaret just said about the um, 75th anniversary of the Universal, the Declaration of, uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, um, our human rights group does do a very, very nice job um, with a letter writing campaign through Amnesty. So two, that might be something where we publicize it more um, and invite people in. They have, a, they have a wonderful turnout every year. They've got all the letter samples already out for people. And it becomes this real great effort to do some, you know, pen to paper work, um, advocating for human rights through amnesty. Uh, and then they go out and they, you know, they hold a vigil, a candlelight vigil, which still gets, it's a vision, it's a visual. So if maybe next year we make sure that we get as many of us to show up for that vigil as well, that would also be lovely, right? That we're supporting students and supporting each other in this um, endeavor. Yeah, who's their advisor, Amy? So that would be Suzanne Desjardins, who's a was teacher of the year, very talented woman, and um, Kim Wilson Holton. And then newly we have Gustav Afanchal. Okay. And if you need those names later again, Jane, I can help you. Yeah, just put them in the chat. That would be really sure. Good. One of the things since I've come to Mansfield and worked in the communications area with the um, town manager's office. Um, you know, I haven't seen a lot of real public collaboration between all the wonderful things that go on at EO and um, and town hall. I think we see a, a nice amount with man with the uh, the downtown partnership, right, where they participate in the the winter welcome and celebrate Mansfield with volunteers and activities and painting some of the windows and so I just really love if this commission could be a wonderful collaboration point on this really important topic, right? So I love if we can do more as a town to actually spotlight the D&D &D group. Um, and in fact, leading up to this first live meeting that you're planning, we really should do a whole press push about what is this student organization and all of the amazing things they've done. In other words, really put this in perspective and this being the first live um, opportunity since COVID. So, you know, I'm really happy to kind of jump on your communications bandwagon as a way to, you know, to really highlight this collaboration between HRC and, uh, and the DD group. Beautiful. Thank you, Margaret. We'll make sure between Esme and Felicia and Derek, we'll make sure that, you know, you get the information you need. Yeah. And if I need to come to a planning meeting with you, you know, when we get closer or when it comes time and that it, that it's publicity time, I'm happy to walk across the parking lot. It's all the way yeah. over there you, and, you, uh, and yeah. sit down and, you know, and, and take a few pictures of the kids, you know, doing their planning and, um, that sounds great. We may even invite you to the next meeting because the students have been doing some tremendous work. So yeah, I'll keep you yeah, posted. But thank you, Margaret. Yeah, no, please. I think that we need to make a lot of it. Okay, now this feels kind of awkward, but it's very important. I need other people to do things and take responsibility for things. And I know everybody's got limits on their time and new babies. But is there anybody 
who will be the, who would be willing to be the point person for Juneteenth, find out what's going on around town, take and then report back to us next month as much as you can about projects that are being planned and then contributions we can make. Is there somebody who is willing to do that? Janine? Okay, thank you. Um, I want to tack on to that. Um, in January, I tried to meet in December with the PTO on their virtual thing, but long story short, let's put that away. January, I have a few minutes. And um, Jane, you've been always talking about wanting to have uh, the chat, like get together and talk and everything. Um, I think if we can use the PTO to encourage that, um, it's a starting point because the families are so diverse and now they're pushing for either a February or an April move-in date for the new school. It's still up in the air, but I think if we, <laughs> I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but you know. <laughs> so, um, Janine, what are you going to talk to them about? Um, I wanted to talk to them about the um, you were interested in having people to get people get together and talk about their lives. Right. And then when you started talking about Juneteenth, I can also speak with the parents in regards to you know, some families, it registers more with than others. So if I can get a feedback from them, like how are they going, how would they like to be represented? And I know with the DEI, um, you know, I can't go into too, a lot of information, but I know we are really trying to look at the calendar and how the schools are going to celebrate, observe or whatever. So if I can, push with the PTO to help out with that. And then I can also maybe, um, I, th I yeah, I think I got a couple connections over at MMS that I can ask, you know, what are they going to do? So if we can get feedback, like interests, how, what are they going to do? What are they, you know, how are they interested in, in um, commemorating it? You so know. you would go out and just get some feedback from people who you know are going to be thinking about it and see what they would like to do. And then we'll see how we can get involved in that or add to that or whatever. Right. A, yeah, a okay. starting point, because if you just start talking, it's going to be, it, that'll be too overwhelming. So if I have, if I could do, you know, target people and then get their feedback. And in January, I have a few minutes allowed on the PTO meeting. Um, so I can use that as well, you know, get their feedback, get the parents, you know, they're always talking about survey monkeys, you know, they can help me out with survey, you know, I'll, I'll kind of like ask them to help me develop the survey monkey. Um, you know, how are the families are interested in, how do they want to be represented? Um, you know, how would they like to uh, celebrate, commemorate um, Juneteenth? Okay, that would be wonderful if you could do that. Let me just tell you, I had a meeting with Peter Dart um, a couple of weeks ago, as you know. How did that go? Oh, it was wonderful. Um, he's Sorry, not I, I had to make that decision. I was like... No, you were right. And he agreed. He thought what you did was smart. He thinks you're wonderful. So just so you know. Um, but anyway, Peter and I cooked up an idea that we would have a little... We uh, found several good um, TED Talks that we you know, wanted to pick one, run it ahead of a PTO meeting and then have people talk about what they saw in the TED Talks for a few minutes, just as a way to get a conversation going about a variety of different topics. And the uh, head of the PTO said no, because they were on Zoom, they didn't wanna do it. And I don't know if that's the real reason or not, but just so you know that that's, that's happened and they've told him no, and he and I are gonna think some other way to do it. But we were rejected by the PTO. Um, and, and do they have a separate one for the middle school and the elementary schools, or is it all one yes. group? Yes. No, it's two groups. Okay. Well, one of them told him no. That's all I know. And he's very respectful of what self-governing groups want to do. So um, see what you can find out. That's background information for you. 
but I still would like to do that because we we were talking about getting book discussions and we realized that nobody wants to read, but we thought if we could get um, a TED talk, which is a 15 to 20 minute video, and then get a bunch of people to talk to each other, that might be a really good thing to do. So we still have to find the context of where to do that. They do that a lot, like in our PDs, there's always a TED talk and then they, we break out and whatever. Yeah, so. that's exactly what we want to do, but we want to do that for the general public. Yeah. So if you can share anything with me at some other point about how to do that, I'd appreciate it. Okay, okay Esme, what do you want to say? This is just to add on to what Janine was saying. Um, I know that this year, I think this was the same last year, but this year, EO is almost definitely not in school for Juneteenth, but I'd be happy to reach out to CAB because usually they do something to celebrate it. Um, right. But, and because CAB is kind of Dr. DiLoretto's little baby, um, I'm imagining that we could also get something that would be in classes like before um school ends so that we would make sure that people are actually you know um being exposed to it and as may i think if i may i know that i saw miss desjardins um a little bit ago and she would love to see more collaboration between cab human rights cd maybe the gsa when it, you know as i think always applicable but the groups that are looking right that and that would bring a broader audience so i think you know to also put, I know that Ms. Dr. DeLoretto is also really looking for ways for the clubs to come together and collaborate. So have, stick that in your cap as well. Um, and I was just gonna say, oh, and the other one um, idea that came from one of the curricular curriculum coaches too for CAB, DD, GSA and um, human rights was to maybe try to do something like a teach-in for um, March 8th, the International Day of the Woman. <laughs> So something else that we we can be thinking about. I didn't bring that up at the meeting today, but I thought um, it sounded like an interesting idea to look at how far people have come, what needs to still happen, different countries, things that are going on. So again, I think that would be something lovely. If we could all collaborate, we could make that into a really very educational, right? Very informative day for everyone. And do you think that would go on at EO or where would that happen and who would we draw? So the a curriculum, that's a great question, Jane. The curriculum coach was really thinking to do something um, geared toward EO students, but I, do, I don't see any reason if we had enough support and enough interest in the community that it couldn't go into like the, into the afternoon or have maybe um, you know, an evening presentation of some sort where people came together again to talk about or, or do breakout rooms. Um, you know, certainly it's going to come up before we know it, but it's something, and, and likewise for Juneteenth, I, perhaps we do something earlier in June. Um, May tends to be all AP exams and, and people getting very stressed out about APs. Um, but those first couple of weeks of June, there might be a day in there. That's when we did the empty bowl. We did empty bowls when last year? I feel like it was in June, wasn't it? It was, was it May. May. Yeah. Mm. Well, we could be thinking about that. And maybe, we, you know, if, I think again, and, and Esme and Felicia, I know Felicia I didn't say, but they're both absolutely right that with Dr. DeLoretto, if we can get Cab involved in something and show that the town is interested, then he's likely to buy in as well. So, um, and if they, if once we find out more certainly what other organizations are thinking of doing for Juneteenth, right? Because we, we've all agreed that we, that it tends to be that there's all these dispersed activities and then nobody really knows and then we're all afraid of stepping on somebody else's toes so if we can find out what's happening already and then come together with some sort of consensus and say to Dr. Delorado we'd like to do some programming that spills into the evening perhaps get some speakers um we just did a pretty good job with our fundraiser we don't have a lot of money to help with speakers but we've got some um so yeah, we still have some money in our budget we spent half our budget <laughs> on uh, Debbie Irving but we have the other half of the budget so right. Could, and I always think about, um, you know, what Katie Bell said in terms of the professorial staff, I know that really they're not supposed to be, but if you give them an honorarium, it's still a nice gesture and they're not as expensive. So, um, you know, I think they interesting. Know, what's that? Are they interesting? They can be Jane. And we've had some really excellent speakers last year through UConn that were professors that were really interesting. Um, and I think that, you know, we all do a good job of um, 
asking the questions ahead of time to make sure that there's somebody that you want to then have time with and listen to, right? That they're going to be engaging. You don't want just somebody up there who's going to be a talking head, who's going to have, you know, you want somebody who's going to have connection with the audience. Um, So I think if we're, if we plan accordingly, and maybe this is too ambitious for all of us for this year, but I think it's at least for, um, in the very least for um, Juneteenth, um, and then looking at Indigenous People Days, because that's further away than for us, that I think we could be doing some pretty interesting things. And I see Margaret's communication here too. Yeah, exactly. We could look at that, Margaret. Okay, let me summarize where we are. Janine is going to scout around and find out what people are thinking about for Juneteenth. Um, I will talk to Suzanne and Kim and Gustav about what the Human Rights Club is doing or whatever their organization is, and then how we could work with them. We have the possibility of doing one or more TED Talk programs context to be determined. And um, there are, I don't know exactly who said this, but somebody of the curriculum coach would like to see people bringing some of the Juneteenth information into classes because Juneteenth she was actually thinking about, she thought about Juneteenth too, but she was actually thinking about the women, the International Day of Women. About International Day of Women, okay. Right, yeah. I think she was, I think she mentioned Juneteenth, but she's she was concerned because of the, it being at the end of the school year. But I think if we did something earlier, Jane, we could probably make it, particularly if we mentioned, we wanna bring in and make sure that it's a whole, right? We bring in the human rights, the CAB group, we bring in GSA, we look at all the different intersectionalities of things then Dilo is going to love it. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've got three or four things. I'm going to do some things. Janine's going to do some things. Barbara is going to track down and find out where the suge- the uh, problem boxes are. I don't know what. Do they have a name? Opinion boxes? Uh, I'm not sure we call them, but I've already talked to Margaret about it on the chat. They haven't gone out yet, but they're going to go to the community oh, center, the library, the town hall, and the senior center. I don't okay. think they're going to the schools. Well, if there were some problems about the schools having those things there, so let's just use the other buildings. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And I will contact the Yukon Women's Center to find out what they're up to and see how we can connect with that as well. All right, I think I've got a list that I can put together and... Yes, Monica, go ahead. So, Jane, do you want to come up with maybe like a list of um, dates or at least so I know what months they're in so I can start putting certain things on the agenda? As... Okay, right. The so women, the month of the woman is March. Okay, so that's probably our first one. Then Pride, okay. Pride Month's probably our second, right? Isn't that? And Pride then... is second and uh, Juneteenth, Juneteenth is third. Mm-hmm. And Indigenous okay. Peoples Day is fourth. Okay. I think if we can do something for each one of those and get our name on it, it would be wonderful. Okay. Okay. It's making me nervous. I haven't had to organize anything big in a long time and I don't, I'm not sure I am intellectually up to this task. So I need all the help I can get. I'm just telling you all. Okay. Do we have enough work to keep us busy? And Margaret has been talking about improving our, the page that we have on the town website and posting some of this stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. I wish I had that kind of confidence. Um, but we're going to, Margaret and I will be talking about what we can do to put things on the website and on our page on the website. Just so that what I, my goal this year, my subterranean goal is just to increase our visibility. You know, we're not going to turn the world upside down, but if everybody knows we're here and we're doing projects that people find valuable, they'll, that will be a very good thing. So, um, not to add to the workload, but um, was there any conversation about Black History Month in February or doing anything about that with that? Or no? We haven't talked about it. That one is Black History Month is overwhelming with the amount of activity that's going on. What would you suggest as a way for us to be involved with that? I am actually not sure, but I know like, um, so you said overwhelming in what sense, like what's going on in the- Everybody in the world is doing things in Black History Month. Black people who are good speakers never get to go home in that month. 
they are running around telling people whatever they're telling people that they think is important. So it's a really huge thing. But Felda, it, can you just put your mind to what would be a contribution that this group could make to that conversation? Because I will tell you that it seems to me that right to the town of Mansfield, the people who live here, unless they're affiliated with some other group, none of this is going toward them. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying, because living in Mansfield, like, we typically say there is nothing happening, especially in the school system. The school does not, um, the public schools do not do much um, to acknowledge Black History Month they from don't. our experiences, no? Um, because that's a conversation we typically have with our kids or, you know, like try to have with um, sure. the schools and stuff like what exactly is going on in terms of, you know, like- Okay, you know what I'm gonna ask you to do? Um, I'm going to ask you to get in touch with Peter Dart, the superintendent, who is a big supporter of all of this and find out what they're doing. And then we will figure out how we can add, contribute, or collaborate. Janine, what do you want to say? Um, it is becoming a little bit more, and yeah, in the past, maybe not, but really, at least with the elementary schools, we have been putting it more and more out there. The library does have displays of books. Anything the library has books, lots of stuff. They have everything out. Um, and then the teachers will, I mean, it's not just the infamous scholastic news that I remember when I was back in elementary school, um, but we do talk about that. And a lot of the teachers I know the past couple of years, um, prominent figures, they will bring them up on their smart boards or whatever, and then they will talk about that. Um, and then we will also, um, like I said, it's getting more and more and more. I, I know at least at Goodwin, I don't know about the other two schools, I'm sure they're doing the same thing. Um, and also what I was doing, what I had done is helping out with the morning announcements. Um, they kind of like started it in the mid November. I looked up I forget how many indigenous individuals who contributed to science, to medicine, to physics, to you name it. And then almost every single day, I, on the morning announcement, it might've been like two or three minutes, it was featured that particular individual of what their contribution was. So my idea was going to be to do the same thing for um, Black History Month, I'm going to, I already started looking up, and this is what I'll be doing over Christmas break, is doing quick little blurbs. I will be researching um, individuals who were prominent, not just the Rosa Parks, but the other individuals, like the, um, there was a woman, I, forgive me, I can't remember her name, but she played the key part in COVID. And no one knew that. So I'm going to be pushing that for Black History Month. Like this is what these are individuals who have contributed and they need to be no, you know, aware. So we are taking a, you know, a step into that by all means, please speak with, with Peter Dart, but be rest assured that we are trying to more and more put it out there, whether it be books, um, slides, discussions and whatnot. And that's what I'm also trying to do is each month hone in like this, even this month, I touch based on Kwanzaa, I touch based on Hanukkah, I touch based on Yule, you know, the pagan rich. I mean, I touched on everything so that it's out there. And sometimes I do hear discussions in classrooms. Okay, so Velda, can you get in touch with Candace Morell and just find out what's going on so you can report back to us? for Black History Month? Are you there? Yeah. Um, we can get a cut out. Yeah. Okay. Yes? I said, okay, I said, okay, I was just wondering who um, Terrence is there in the car right now. I'm just kidding, Terrence and Ken Morrell is a um, old principal of the middle school. She's class. open the curriculum now. You're breaking up. I can't understand what you're saying. I am driving right now. Hold on. I'll oh. be in the chair. We're not driving. I'm in the car. So. Okay. I will be back in touch with you about this then. And see what we need to do.
about what's happening. I, that just blew me away that they didn't already do a million things. Um, Jane? Yeah. Um, under new business, did everybody get this email from Ryan Ellsworth today about sustainable Connecticut? And do we need to be involved in that? Because climate change is definitely going to affect people's human rights in a huge way. Yeah. Um, since it only came today, I think we should put that on the agenda for next month. Okay. That's a very long, complicated email. Okay. And, um, it takes a while to digest all that information. Okay, I think we've got enough to keep us busy and we've got several point people to do the work and make the connections. So I will be checking in with you periodically to find out what you've done so far and please answer my emails. I can't function if I don't get communication back. So, um, and Quincy, you get excused for quite some time until you have got <laughs> your life stabilized again, which may be 18 <laughs> years from now, I don't know. I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, the, Quincy just had a baby. I don't know if you heard that. So yeah. she's very, very busy with that. Wonderful. Okay. All right. I will be back in touch with all the follow-up people. I will write notes to everybody, but I'll target. You're doing this. You're doing this. You're doing that. Just so that everybody knows what they're doing. And then we will see where we go with all of that. I'm really very aware of the fact that we are building an organization from next to nothing. And so if it doesn't all work, if we can get 40% of it to work, I'll be thrilled because we don't have a good enough structure to really make things happen, but we all need to do something. And, um, and building these connections with, with people in the schools and uh, other kinds of committees is very, very important to make that happen. Okay. Um, and Monica, thank God for you and your minutes. That's all I can say. All right. <laughs> all right. Building Bridges exhibit donation. Uh, Margaret put that on the agenda. Can you tell us what that's about, please? Uh, yes, so uh, the Building Bridges photo exhibit that we featured at the Celebrate Mansfield Festival was generated by an organization in, um, and I'm hoping their name is on the agenda. I don't know if it is, but- um, Family Diversity Projects. Yes, thank you. Um, and so they created a number of these exhibits that they push out and make available to communities. So the Quiet Corner Refugee Resettlement folks and the, I think the WAME Interfaith um, group is who identified it and found this exhibit and brought it to the Mansfield area. And it lived in different locations, right? From June and in the summertime and Barbara and I went and saw it in Columbia and then we hosted it and then the Willimantic Public Library hosted it. So it, it really enriched our area. So uh, Rhonda had reached out, Rhonda Kincaid, who was my contact with Quiet Corner Resettlement, um, and, uh, and just asked if we could consider making some sort of a contribution to this organization. Uh, they produce this stuff all free of charge, but they are a nonprofit. So I told her that we would try to you know, bring that to the, to the group. Um, and we also need to find out, and I haven't done this yet, I don't know if Monica knows, but um, how we can go about making a donation like this as a commission uh, to a nonprofit, but we would just need to vote to agree to do that um, and just decide you know, how much would be appropriate, and then we can find out how we could execute that through the finance department. Okay. For your information, oh, go ahead, Monica. So um, I do know that we will need to reach out to them if we decide to do this. Uh, and they will need to fill out paperwork in order to get paid, all of the bad jazz. But um, I do think that if we're going to make the motion, say um, the motion should include that if the town manager approves, um, just because that is the, the next step. Okay. So for your all information, we received an allocation of $5,000 for this year. Some of it will go to pay for those boxes that are being distributed and 2,500 of it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, went to pay for Debbie Irvin. So we probably have no less than 18 or $1,900 left in our budget. So when you're thinking about how much you might want to donate to support this project, um, that's, 
that's how much we have and we're going to need money for other things but we have that money um and i the budget cycle is just now beginning and i'm not clear on to whether we should ask for a budget for next year it will certainly be smaller than the one we got this year but i think we can ask for something i just have to find out how so what's everybody's thought on this exhibit got a lot of attention at the welcome to mansfield event and then it was moved around in a lot of different places in this and it got us front page coverage in the newspaper when we featured it that's right on the in the chronicle um i have a question do we have to spend all of that money by the end of the count physical year or can it carry over to next year that's it monica do you know i think it needs to be spent by the end of the fiscal year so the um june july 1st so june 30th essentially good question thank you <clears throat> also that is something we can say we did right and celebrate mansfield festival yep so we co-hosted this so what what do people think about that well, we have to spend our money by July 1st. <laughs> so if we don't have another project and making a donation that needs that money, making some sort of donation might be a good idea. Yeah, I don't think we have to spend all of it. If we have to give some of it back and then ask for more next year, that's not a big catastrophe. Um, <clears throat> but I think since we did incorporate it into our presentation and we did get very good coverage out of it, we ought to give them something. Um, and it seems to me like maybe a hundred dollars might be a good idea. Is that reasonable? I would agree with a hundred dollars. Yeah, okay. I could second that motion. Okay. Um, pending the approval of the town manager, that okay. Well, <laughs> who who moved? I'm sorry. Did did someone move it yet? Uh, oh, we, Jane can't. Somebody, Jane can't, can't move, move it. it. Yeah. So somebody else, please move it. So I'll move, and then Barb. Barbara can second. Okay, thank you. And the language will be pending the approval of the town manager. The Human Rights Commission um, has voted to make a donation of the building brick to the building bridges exhibit, um, which we incorporated into our program at Welcome to Mansfield in the fall. Or words to that effect. Okay. Of one hundred dollars. Of one hundred dollars. Yes. You always got it. Always got to specify the money. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I'm much more alert at 10 o'clock in the morning than I am at 8 o'clock at night. So I'm just working my hardest on this. Okay, I think we're okay with that. Um, anything else to say on that subject? You better take a vote. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we're now moving into member reports. What have people done with regard to the mission of this organization over the last month or so? Anybody have done anything, gone to any events or anything like that? Esme, go ahead. Um, this is just something for the Human Rights Club, which I'm sure Felicia can testify to more, but I, they did a Right for Rights event where people wrote letters to Amnesty um, Amy already mentioned this, but it was very successful. And I think it's still going on within some classes. So. Okay, and it's going on in classes at Smith? Uh, yeah, it depends on the teacher, to be honest. It's mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're bringing in the rest of the amnesty cases into some of the classes and they're writing things. Um, but we also, there was a movie showing and we had a candlelight vigil after we wrote letters and people were on the street um, honking for human rights. Um, and then there's also a youth summit at UConn uh, January 11th with the um, Human Rights Institute that students will be going to at you as well. So that's exciting. wonderful. Okay, thank you. Other people, what has anybody been doing? Amy. Traditionally, the deliberation discourse held a very successful um, speaker, a virtual speaker on um, trans safety and looking at um, laws protecting or not protecting um, trans individuals, but it was a really great night. Uh, uh, an individual from Q plus was the speaker and we had nice attendance. So that was great. And we've got a couple more speakers coming up. But I don't remember when those are either. So we'll get the calendar out. 
Okay, good. Anybody else? Right. I met with Peter Dart um, and we were trying to figure out, he, we, he and I talked about the calendar and the various options he has um, for revising the calendar for next year, but he is determined to make the calendar more inclusive. And there are many different ways to do that. And I, he presented to the board last sometime this month and I don't know what they decided, but he's working on that. And um, he and I both decided that we are gonna figure out some way to have public conversations. We have not, uh, figured that out yet, but we we're working on that. And um, the other thing is I wrote the proclamation that the town council passed last night. Um, and I have written several other things in relation to the uh, the noose incident at RAM. Um, I wrote a nasty letter to the editor about how horrible somebody's column was related to that. And of course they didn't publish it because I said it was a horrible newspaper. But then Susan Johnson wrote an outstanding letter that they published in Toto about the history of the news and how terrifying it is and how one needs to respond to it whenever a news appears in public. Um, so the background for the proclamation was how angry I was about the news but I decided to turn that into a proclamation for the commission. I also have an essay about what nooses mean. And did I send that around to everybody? Uh, no, you sent I the letter. Did. Okay, I sent the letter. All right, well, I wrote this essay and I toned it down and changed the focus to human rights and the person's right to be secure in their person. And I have written that essay and I think it's gonna be posted on our website. Um, just to tell people what a noose means in case people don't understand what that means. And um, there was no clear understanding of whether we could just post something on our website or whether I had to get Ryan's permission. And I don't think that issue got addressed, has been addressed yet, but I hope to put that essay up on our website and I will say, it's very short. It's I think 600 words and I will uh, send it all to you as well. So I think one of the big things about human rights is when they're violated, somebody has to make a lot of noise. And I was trying to make a lot of noise about the news. So that's what I've been doing lately. Other people doing anything about human rights. Um, sorry, I know I'm uh, blacked out in video, but this is Quincy. Um, so I have been doing a few, a few different things. I attended the uh, NAACP's uh, annual convention, so the educational convention, um, and we talked about minority teacher recruitment. And then past that point, I've been in touch with Yale Law School in their, in their um, interactions with trying to interview di different teachers around the state and past educators um, uh, to talk about minority recruitment and, and how we can fix those numbers. Um, on the other vein of the noose and, and Ram High School, I have been working with the NAACP. I was not at the, at the press conference. I was having a child, um, but, um, but I have been in close contact and I know that there will be some other gatherings making some noise. So for those dates, I can, I can, uh, just kind of shoot out, out an email to the, the group for when those meetings are happening and when those rallies are happening um, in regards to that, if anybody wants to show up. Um, and I know that they're, they, they, they are actually having a Kwanzaa, a Kwanzaa mm -hmm. celebration. Um, and, 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 and it talks about the meaning behind Kwanzaa and kind of the education behind, behind Kwanzaa. And that's this Saturday, December 17th at, um, 12 o'clock to two o'clock at the public library in Willimantic. I can put this information in the chat um, just in case anybody wanted to come. And that's being put on by the NAACP youth organization, the youth organization, um, which is small but mighty. Um, <laughs> and um, one last thing I wanted to mention is on, on January 14th, there's an MLK celebration i don't know i, I, I want to get some more information i know there's going to be music and speakers and some visuals but i'm not sure of the location and i'm not sure of the time so um i'd, I'd love to update you guys more on that to, to see if maybe we we as a group can link up or individually if you guys want to attend or you know so i'll 
try and get that information. I shot over a text during this during this meeting, but I haven't gotten a response yet. Okay, Quincy, thank you very much. Um, th that Kwanzaa celebration sounds like it's going to be fun, and it's the first time in two years they've had an in-person. Um, yes. They used to have fantastic Christmas parties, and um, they had to stop doing that. And this is the first time they're coming back. So if anybody's free at noon, go to the Willimantic Public Library. Plus, it's kids doing an educational program for everybody, and that's a wonderful thing. So I encourage anybody who's available and with or without your children go, I'm sure it's gonna be very good. Um, anything else? Okay, that's where we are with member reports. Now there's one more, the communication we got. Um, I think we've done what Melissa S asked for. Melissa Sheardright is a member of NAACP. And when that news incident happened, she wrote a powerful email to me. And I don't know if you all got it or not asking for us to support them. And, um, that letter that I wrote was my attempt to support them, but uh, is there? I don't think there's anything else we need to say about that letter, except that we we are in sympathy and we will support them any way we can, um, because we think what's going on at RAM right now is unacceptable. And somebody in the town council said to me, "Why are we talking about this? It didn't happen in our town." And I was reminded of the saying by Pastor Niemöller, you know, when they came for the Jews, I didn't say anything because I wasn't a Jew. And when they came for the gays, I didn't say anything because I wasn't gay. And when they came for me, there was nobody to speak up. And that's always been a motto of mine. So when something happens in a town this close, it's that awful. Everybody needs to speak up. And that's why I felt we needed to take it on. Um, so just FYI. Other comments, thoughts? This is kind of a big conversation and we're gonna to have to bring it down to a list of what are we gonna do and who's gonna be the point person, but that is the way to make progress. And then point people, get your friends to help you. Nobody should be doing anything by themselves. You should always be having friends or other support people so you don't burn out and go crazy. Um, if you need to write a note to the whole Human Rights Commission, the address is, right here in my book, someplace. HRC at mansfieldct.org. All you have to do is write that down and everybody will get your note. Um, so if you're doing things that you want support or you want somebody else's opinion, just write a note to everybody because it's a long time between meetings. And um, I obviously have been doing that myself. Are there other comments or thoughts? Are there any, is there a member of the public here who wants to speak, anybody? I don't believe so. Okay. Do we, uh, and Monica, I will look forward to these minutes and I will put my minutes together and then I will send my summary notes out to everybody. And then please put whatever time you have available into the project that you agreed to take a look at so that we can start making some progress and let people know that we're around and that we care about this subject. Um, and then if I may, Jane, just to, to piggyback on what you were saying, thank you so okay. much for me rattling and making noise around um, what happened at RAM, because certainly we know too that, you know, much of the RAM community is equally disgusted. And I think that's where they also need to know that we're rallying for them. A lot of those the teachers there are absolutely hor horrified. Yeah. But um, what also in light of the nice document that you wrote up with the with um, tying everything to the document, uh, the Declaration of Human Rights, please, please, please. Um, in the next couple of weeks, be thinking about things in terms of access to education and how human rights ties into that so we can be working on promoting our program together and making sure that it's a really rich program that attracts people, right? So um, the more help we have from you, the better the night's going to be and um, the more efficient we can be too at finding who our speakers will be. So thank you for all of you for your help on that because Esme and Felicia are, are are the front men or the front women for a couple of our um, leadership groups around there on our executive committee, committee and they've been working really hard but any input you have will just make that conversation much richer and I know Velda thank you for you know also for advocating for education and, and pointing out what is being done right the question is is great there are some schools that are doing a lot but what are other schools doing and then how are these things carrying over so it, the month is important but we're also seeing these um, important individuals being mentioned throughout the year, right? So that we don't always have to have everything in, 
in cubbies anymore and it becomes you can't part squeeze of it all into February. And right? you it so anyway, February is, we have our big conversation. So please, before then, before our next meeting, send the emails to me, the um, Felicia, Esme, and we'll get things going. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Go home and think when you're awake and functional. Okay. I will see you all soon. I will be in communication with you. Thank you, Monica, very much for everything you're doing. Take care. Have a good night. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays.